my name is Mark Castell. I'm the executive director of Organic Eye. Uh, we are an organic uh, industry watchdog. We act as a governmental and corporate watchdog to make sure that the promise we all uh, believed in when we helped build the organic movement uh, uh, is not sold out to the highest bidder. And um, I want to talk today a little bit about the what I perceive to be as two different organic labels. And uh, they don't look any different. They all have the USDA seal on them. But how can you be a better judge when you shop for your food? How can you get food that's beyond the minimum uh, requirements in organic? Uh, protect yourself from fraud. Um, make sure that it's not just free from agrochemical and drug residues or GMOs, but uh, it actually has a superior uh, nutritional content, and there's a parallel between nutrition and flavor. So how to get the very best food. So um, I have skin in the game, and I'm sure many of you uh, on Zoom and Facebook uh, do as well. Um, I started my career in conventional agriculture with International Harvester Tractor and Implement Company. Uh, when they were headquartered on Michigan Avenue in Chicago, on the Chicago River. Um, and uh, prior to the 1950s, uh, almost all family scale farms in the United States were virtually organic. They might have used synthetic nitrogen, but it wasn't until after the war that all these uh, insecticides and fungicides and herbicides uh, really became uh, commonly used. And uh, while I was working in the agricultural industry, I got sick, virtually disabled. I was lucky enough to see the country's preeminent environmental allergist. And while I was being treated, he said I should eat all organic food and uh, take the strain off my immune system. And back in the 80s, there was very little organic food commercially available. Uh, so that was a challenge. Um, it led me to seek out better food. Um, and it's not unlike the story of many of the pioneering organic farmers. Uh, when I ask them the question, my favorite question to them is, why did you become organic? And I, I'll use two examples, two heroes of mine, um, Bill Welsh and Ray Haas. They were both on the original board of directors at uh, the Crop Cooperative uh, when they hired me and I helped launch the Organic Valley brand uh, when I was still doing commercial work. and. Um, Ray and, uh, and uh, was a dairy farmer and Bill was a livestock producer. Um, Ray, uh, I asked him, and he had a gorgeous farm overlooking the Mississippi River, why he became organic. Didn't see a weed on his farm. It was just an incredibly beautiful operation. And he said, and he was a mild mannered man. He, he said, one day, one of my adult children got sick from handling some quote material on the farm, farm chemical. and. Uh, and uh, he came in and he said he banged his fist on the table at lunch with his wife and said, uh, we're going to uh, quit using chemicals or we're gonna quit farming. And Ray had been born on that farm, he wasn't quitting. And he became a, a very talented uh, organic farmer. Um, and Bill Welsh lost his entire herd of cattle and they couldn't figure it out, it was a mystery, but later they found an empty insecticide bag that had come in contact with a round hay bale in a barn, an empty bag. Uh, and when he did the research uh, as to uh, what was in the bag, he found out that it was the same, one of the same chemicals he studied in biological warfare school during the Korean War. So just a minute amount of dust uh, basically killed his entire herd and Bill became an organic farmer. So, you know, why are you eating organic food? There's a lot of you uh, who I know have had health challenges or some in your family. And I'm here to convince you today, if you haven't had those challenges yet, that it's worth it to invest some of your time, emotional energy and money in better food, because it's a matter of pay now or pay later. We have the cheapest food in the world, bar none, as a percentage of our incomes. For most families, we're food secure. 
not everybody in this country, uh, but compared to anybody else in the world, we pay a minute amount of our incomes, probably uh, well, less than 10% today uh, on uh, food. We have the most expensive healthcare in the world at the same time and by multiples and the health outcomes are very poor. So we're a sick society. We're eating very poor quality food. We have to seek medical attention. We pay through the nose as a society for that. And our, um, our longevity, our, uh, the age uh, death rate is, um, age of death is uh, falling. Uh, infant mortality, low infant birth weight, problems with reproduction, they're just off the mat, chronic disease. So um, I'm hoping that you'll invest some of your resources from your heart uh, in terms of finding better food. This will pay dividends to you, your family, the planet, the people who produce the food. If there's one thing we do, forget about the health impacts or the environmental impacts. If there's one thing we do when we choose an organic diet, is we're choosing to protect the hardworking people who produce our food, the farmers and the farm workers. All too often, or very commonly, they live contiguously to the farm fields and the children have all kinds of chronic disease. Uh, so we're making sure that they're being taken care of. Um, so uh, two organic labels. I should have said this before. You should have a pen and paper to make notes. I'm gonna share some resources. But I'm also going to do a little training here in graphic arts. So if you do have a piece of paper, I'm going to ask you to, um, and, and if I had asked our graphic designer, maybe we'd have something on the screen. Or if I was a better artist, I'd have an easel here. But I'm going to talk you through this. Um, so if you take your paper and use the entire paper and put a large triangle on there, I bet when you were in school, you learned how to Try, draw an equilateral triangle. And I want to create the organic triangle, um, the organic food pyramid. Let me put it, the USDA has a food pyramid on different food groups you're supposed to eat. And it's been pretty whacked out over the years. They want to eat a lot of carbohydrates, sugars and white flour and things like that. And um, that's not a really good idea. And they've been improving it over the years. But um, this hierarchy uh, of the organic food pyramid, I'm stealing from my old friend, George Seaman, who was one of the founders and at, on the board of um, Crop at Organic Value when they hired me to do their first market research and their corporate identity work. Um, and uh, so he came up with this idea and I kind of refined it. So on the bottom of your pyramid, so that we're gonna get to the pinnacle um, eventually, but in the bottom would be uh, USDA certified imported food. Uh, so the, the bottom should be organic food. That should be the minimum uh, that we demand from the marketplace and from our efforts in eating. One step up, the next line, if you want to put a line in there, would be USDA certified food grown in the United States because uh, through all my investigations, uh, we find a disproportionate amount of problems in terms of fraud and misrepresentation in imports. The USDA is not doing the job we think they should be doing in scrutinizing giant shiploads of grain and, um, and other commodities, um, let alone the small ingredients and specialty crops. And we're gonna be doing a large expose. Some of those aren't even getting inspected on an annual basis like our annual farmers in the United States. So the next step up would be the bare minimum USDA organic. One step above that would be regional food. Remember it's organic. Um, how do you connect with that? very commonly through uh, cooperative owned grocery stores, uh, independently owned natural food grocers. Um, uh, other retailers might be connecting with the local food shed. Uh, 
a lot of times I'm, I'm lucky enough. We have a lot of co-ops here in, in Wisconsin. My electric company is cooperatively owned by us, the members. Uh, my telephone company is a cooperative that's I'm through the magic of their internet connection. Um, yeah, I hear a little noise. So if anybody's not muted or Krista, if you could mute everybody, that would be good. Um, and um, so we have co-ops. That's some of the very best co-ops in the United States. And there are a few hundred. And I'll be giving some resources on how to connect to all these in a little while. Uh, it's like a farmer's market seven days a week. Uh, our co-op in, in Viroqua, Wisconsin, uh, we're in this county where it's thought that we might have uh, more uh, organic farmers in any county in the entire, entire United States, they deal with literally dozens of certified organic local growers. They know the growers, they visit that with them. Linda, their, their produce manager really takes care of all of us, the growers, uh, and the um, uh, eaters. And uh, so she's vetting these uh, producers. So you know they're great. And uh, if we're going to continue up that pyramid, um, I call it very local, how to connect with your food. Uh, and this is where the meaning really kicks in. A lot of co ops will include the name of the uh, farmer right on there and where it comes from. That that uh, is meaningful to me, but um, meeting the farmer, uh, shaking her hand or his hand at the weekly farmer's market, um, investing, I have a number of choices here, but investing in a CSA, Community Supported Agriculture, where a box of fresh food uh, gets delivered to a pickup point in my neighborhood, um, whether it's um, the farmer's market, whether it's a CSA box, whether it's a farm store or a farm stand on the farm. Um, this is food that might have been uh, harvested 10 hours ago instead of 10 days ago in Mexico or uh, California or even longer, these nice peppers that come in from uh, Holland or asparagus from Peru. And uh, with the freshness, there's unparalleled flavor and nutrition. Uh, we have a saying here in Wisconsin, don't go out to the uh, garden to pick the sweet corn until the water is already boiling on the stove in the kitchen. If you want flavor, if you want fresh, uh, you know, it needs to be fresh if you want flavor and nutrition. So these very local um, uh, sources for your food have names. You'll know the names of your farmer. You'll know the names of their farm. Many of them have open houses. They invite you to ask questions, whether it's at the market or their field day, um, or they might have you pick. Uh, right now, one of the farms I buy from, have, uh, their apples are all coming in and they have a choice. You have a choice. They'll harvest it for you. You go out and pick your own. And, um, and you get to know them. They get to know you. You get to know the animals, how they're cared for. Um, I think that is the uh, a real prize. And um, at my farmer's market, there might be a few farmers who aren't certified, but who I know, and I know their practices, and they're very open. And uh, I, I always choose certified organic local first, but there are some options where that broadens things. Um, in this entire uh, two decades that I've been doing this work, I have found virtually no fraud on a local basis. Zero. I mean, well, close to zero. I found a few uh, farmers complained about folks who were misrepresenting something at the farmer's market. They were organic, but they had weren't certified and they had their organic seal or sign up, which was not legal. Uh, but generally speaking, that's where you're going to get your best food. And it's hard to get it year round. But if we eat seasonally, I'm starting by winter squash and really good keeper variety apples, which will I had apples last year from an heirloom grower in my community until June in my cold room, which is basically like a root cellar in my basement. Uh, okay, we're at the top of the pinnacle, folks. We're at the top of the pyramid. Grow your own. There is something magical, whether you have kids or not, in going out and putting your own hands in soil. 
I have friends that do containers because they're, they live in an urban place. I have other friends who have a um, community garden spot or plot. Uh, so it's uh, two blocks away and they, it's a social activity because a lot of their friends have plots or they've made friends there. Or there's water available, they share, share tools. Um, so again, that uh, incredible freshness and flavor, but it's really your food. You know where it comes from. You know a Google organic seed. Um, there are some great purveyors of certified organic seed out there. It's um, bread to do well in organic conditions, maybe not as high nitrogen as putting synthetic fertilizers in, but it's also those seeds are grown um, without using any kind of toxic um, toxic uh, agrochemicals. So um, growing your own, I, I can tell you I'm single now, but when I've been married and partnered, uh, it's one of the most um, enjoyable, uh, intimate things to share um, at maybe the end of the day when things have cooled down a little bit, whether it's uh, sitting across from each other, weeding a, a bed or planting. It's very quiet work. You can have a conversation. Um, I know from friends who engage in this activity with their children, uh, and I can remember planting, you know, avocado seeds or something in grammar school. We just, it was an amazing uh, metamorphosis to see a seed uh, turn into a plant and then later be able to consume it. And lots of schools are practicing at edible schoolyards and other learning opportunities. So I know it takes effort, whether it's growing your own, it takes time, whether it's going across town, maybe to a better store or picking up, uh, I pick up my own milk from a farmer. Um, it's an investment of time, but how much time is that gonna save you in the waiting room of the clinic or hospital down the road? How much money is that gonna save down the road because you're buying uh, better food? Uh, organic food has become more available. And I can tell you back in the 80s, 90s, when we were commercializing organic food, we joked someday there will be an organic Twinkie. Well, there isn't organic Twinkies yet that I know of, but they're, the, um, they're organic, the equivalent of organic Oreos. Uh, and there's a lot of processed food. So eating whole foods, cooking, which is an investment of time, but something that can be shared as well. Um, will really add meaning to your life, add literally years to your life. Um, and uh, I can tell you that I was forced into it when I was virtually disabled 35 years ago, and I got better. Uh, don't wait until you have a crisis till somebody in your family has cancer or an autoimmune disease or reproductive problems. This is especially critical to get the best food when you're pregnant, when you're lactating, um, for the children when they're uh, developing. Uh, we have a lot of um, uh, synthetic chemicals that act as um, endocrine mimickers or, um, and, and they, they can trigger things, especially during those developmental years. So um, I'm gonna break for a second, see if we have any questions yet at the end, we're going to have more questions because I'm going to shift now to uh, after this to uh, some news items, including, as I promised, vaccines and coatings on uh, produce and and then whatever else people want to talk about. So, Krista, do we have any? Um, uh, well, we haven't really asked for questions yet, so I'll say if you have any questions through the uh, chat feature in um, uh, Zoom please feel free to articulate them and you can communicate your questions um, in the comments section uh, in Facebook, if you're on, on Facebook. Sure, so no questions right now. We do have a lot of comments though of folks agreeing with you saying that they also support their local food co-ops co um, and that they also try and avoid processed food that cooking does take time, but it is worth it and it makes a big difference. Um, if there are folks who have additional questions, I will encourage you to put them in the chat. Diana, I see that your hand is up. Um, so I'm going to ask to unmute you and then you could actually ask the question. Okay. Live. And 
and Diana, or um, I'm sorry, Krista, make sure we can see you when you're speaking. I'm not, I can't see you. I don't know if everybody else can. Okay. That makes it easier for me to understand. I can read your lips that way. No Thanks. problem. So Diana, you can go ahead. Yeah, thanks. Um, I'm concerned about mRNA vaccinated animals. Is there any uh, certification that uh, includes not having the animal uh, injected with uh, mRNA? I, I would think that non-GMO would include that, but apparently, as far as I know, there's nothing that can actually inform us about what, what the farmers are doing or the people raising animals are doing about injecting. Okay, thanks, Diana, for your question. Um, and this was gonna be the first, am I back on the screen, uh, Krista? Um, and are. we can mute, every, mute everybody else. Okay, thanks. Um, so this was the first topic I was gonna bring up. I have good news and bad news for everybody who has a concern. Okay, first, uh, the moderately good news is um, there are virtually no uh, mRNA vaccines available commercially to livestock producers today. The only except in the United States, the only exception to that that I'm aware of are some kind of custom, uh, uh, genetically customized products for hog producers. So if you don't eat pork, uh, you're uh, in good shape and that's uh, being used on a very limited basis. Uh, for none of the other species, so if you're buying lamb or beef, um, goat or cow milk or eggs, there are no, um, none of the newer technology like they used for the uh, uh, SARS-CoV-2 vaccines uh, are in use. The bad news is they are, uh, the pharmaceutical industry is aggressively um, um, working on developing those and getting them approved. So it's something we have to be vigilant and on guard for if you have a concern. We try to be neutral on these uh, issues and report the facts so people can make really good discerning purchasing decisions. Uh, the bad news is that although all of us think that GMOs are banned in organic production, the industry that is all too chummy with the USDA, like regulatory capture everywhere, um, in everywhere in Washington at least, uh, the industry created a loophole to allow GMO vaccines. The only GMOs that I know of that are allowed by law. But the caveat is that they had to be reviewed for safety and approved by the National Organic Standards Board. They haven't done that. so. They are being illegally used right now. Some uh, certifiers are tracking that. Some are just, you know, see no evil, hear no evil. They're not tracking it at all. We have asked the USDA to convene a public hearing, a conference uh, through the National Organic Standards Board uh, to tighten this up and make this public. And I uh, will, if you, if you're either a a uh, member of Organic Eye, and you can contribute on our website if you choose to do so, or we have a free news feed. Either way, you will hear from us when the time is right to put pressure, and, and we might have some kind of petition we get together. I'm working with a couple other groups on this right now to force them to have that conference. Once that conference happens, we have to make our voices heard because uh, we didn't sign up for GMOs. And, and so here's the telltale word of caution. There hasn't been, to my knowledge, any testing on the human health impacts of any of these GMO vaccines. Uh, and if anybody wants to correct me, please send me an email address. Um, but they have looked at the uh, COVID vaccines. And one of the uh, question marks that have been found is that the antibodies that are created are showing up in human breast milk. So um, that might be good or bad, depending on your position. But what I can tell you is unknown. And we don't want to experiment with our children's lives when we buy organic food. Is we are injecting animals for 
diseases that they can contract, contact, contract, sorry, their species, but not humans. And are those antibodies being passed along in the milk or eggs or meat? I'd like to know. I think the National Organic Standards Board should know before they approve the use of any genetically modified vaccine in production. So that's the long answer to the question. Uh, and Krista, it might be better for you to read the questions if we end up with uh, a number of them so we could get um, as many as possible in. The, the, the reason that that was a longer answer is that was my presentation on vaccines. So the short answer to that question uh, is um, you have to go to that triangle and look at your local food shed and talk to farmers that are directly marketing milk and meat and eggs and ask them if they are vaccinating and if so, what vaccinations. I'm going to do this again at the end, but I prepared a, uh, you can't really see it, you can't really read it, oh, maybe you can but I if you go to organiceye.org, which is our website, and you click on resources, and that's where you could find past uh, episodes of Castell's Kitchen, by the way. But if you click on the FAQs, frequently asked questions, the, the top one today is, I've, I've, I added this morning, where do you find that better food? So you don't have to make a, a note on these right now, but here are the resources I've recommended in speeches I've made. Eat Wild, which is a nonprofit, and, and Local Harvest. They both keep databases of farmers and what you can buy from them. The Weston A. Price Foundation, a longtime ally that has chapters around the country, and their local chapter leaders have lists of the very best farmers, and they have standards for food that exceed many others. There are many State Department of Agriculture's that have buy local from Wisconsin or whatever state you're in, um, and they have searchable databases. The Real Organic Project, friends of ours that have uh, listings that you could search by your zip code or state on their website of some of the best organic farmers in the country. And finally, the National Cooperative Grocers Association, uh, and on their website, you can search for the better part of the couple hundred um, uh, co-op member-owned groceries around the country to figure out if there's one either in your city or maybe a city you travel to frequently. And they're a great resource for not only food, but information. So that's my long and short story on vaccinated animals. We don't know, there's no evidence that vaccines and animals have historically been a problem, but, uh, Again, we want to know. We have the right to know how our food is produced. And uh, be, be an be a Organic Eye member or sign up for our free news feed, and we will connect you to how we can make our voices heard to make sure that we have the information we're so hungry for. Krista, what do we got next? We do have several other questions, so I just want to be mindful of time when it comes to the detail that you provide in your answers, Mark. Um, well, that, that, was of, long, <laughs> that was long because it was my presentation, too. So I got of you. Of course. Thank you. Um, and, and you kind of hinted on this in, in your last few statements. But the question next is, how can folks identify people whose food products are best practices, meaning that they might not be quite organic, but they are, in fact, the next step down? Okay. Well, I personally, I don't eat the next step down. The next step down is where people are using agrochemicals and drugs on their animals. Uh, and uh, the only non-certified I buy is from people who are practicing organic, but have decided not to be certified for one reason or another. If that's your only option, you need to ask them what you're doing that's different. And I can tell you that uh, one compromise I've made uh, is one of my certified organic farms where I buy my milk and my eggs that are certified and my apples is um, I buy beef from them. The only, and it's 100% grass. That's my standard, organic, 100% grass. Their beef is not certified because they buy feeder calves. So their calves were not born on an organic farm. Once they're little baby calves, their entire life subsequent to that birth has been 
happening on their organic farm, St. Bridget's, which is wonderful. Uh, I, you can buy corn finished uh, organic beef. I don't, because what we now know is that we have a real imbalance in our diets between omega-3 and omega-6 fatty acids. So, so much of our processed food contains corn and soy, soy sweeteners, uh, or uh, corn sweeteners, I'm sorry. Uh, the animals are fed soy and corn. Uh, you know, my lay description is that marbling in the beef, that fat is like eating margarine. And, and so if you eat, these, these critters were created by God to eat grass. We can't eat grass. That's why they have multiple stomachs. They have the rumen that breaks down the fibrous um, forage that they're eating. And so I demand 100% be, uh, grass. And so my farmer is not certified, but I know them personally. I can ask them questions. They don't use any antibiotics. They don't use growth uh, enhancing steroids um, and they don't use any chemicals on their farm. So um, I'm lucky. But uh, if somebody says, oh, we're beyond organic and they're, they're egg producers, my eggs really go out. And, and we know that some of these big egg brands their chickens are never outside. They're breaking the law. This has been one of my agenda items for years, and I'm not through fighting on that one. Um, but they, uh, there are people I see that they they advertise their eggs as fantastic, and they're they they might be moving them in a mobile coop on the on the pasture. That's the gold standard. But they're not feeding organic feed, and unlike cows that are the ruminants, cow, sheep, goats, they can live on nothing but grass. Those birds descended from, you know, uh, evolutionary times in, in Africa, and they eat mostly seeds. So even the best farmers uh, who pasture their poultry um, uh, tell me that during the summer, um, during, the, during the summer, 85% uh, of their feed intake Joel Salton, who's a friend of mine in Vermont, uh, in uh, Virginia, you couldn't get, he literally wrote the book on pasture poultry. And 85% and of what those birds are eating are grain. So uh, whether it's eggs or broiler chickens. So um, if it's not organic, you're eating, you're bioaccumulating uh, toxins in your food chain. Don't do that, buy organic eggs, buy organic chickens, find the people local who are certified or they can even show you the receipts they buy from the local certified organic grain handler but if they only have a 200 chickens they might not be able to be certified so you need to use your own judgment and educate yourselves okay krista all right well we'll do one more question and then i want to talk about coatings on produce one of the promises i made okay Let's see. Could you cover or explain a bit more detail around the two different organic labels? Sure, I'm gonna do that really briefly because I'm gonna assume that somebody missed the beginning. By the way, if you missed the beginning, Krista's gonna have, Krista's our techno nerd, but um, I say that affectionately. Um, mm -hmm. She knows way more than I do. She, I take orders from her. Um, by tomorrow, we will have on our website, on our, U our YouTube, I think we'll be right away, right, Krista? We'll have an uh, archived copy of this Correct. video. But on our website and on our uh, YouTube channel, and I'm gonna ask everybody, if you think there's value to our organic movement and sharing this information, send that email, uh, send our link in an email, share it on Facebook. Uh, we have more power together and you're helping organic eye do its job quickly so you, quickly you mark could if you in. could if you could take that answer and then also answer um how someone could find a list of co-ops or csas in their area i think that would be pretty meaningful for our audience yeah okay so um boy that's a you're stumping me so watch the beginning of the video if you missed it i'm going to cover that i did talk about in the resources section on organic eye there is a list of places to connect to local co-ops, local farmers, but I didn't include uh, a link for local CSAs. I know there is a, a, a nonprofit in Wisconsin that, that helps people connect with CSAs. So I will add that to the resources. I will try to do that by tomorrow. Um, 
And Krista, remind me, send me an email to remind me because I'm not making notes. Um, but uh, that, you know, that, you know, search engines, including Google or your favorite search engine, uh, if you do CSA and your state, CSA and your city, um, that many cities have numerous CSAs in the metro areas that will deliver right into your suburb or community. The, the CSA I belong to is in Vernon County here, and they deliver to Madison and the Twin Cities and La Crosse. So uh, you, you can really have access to great food, and they maybe will even let you join at the end of the year here for the last month or two. Um, my CSA operates from uh, May through October, and then uh, either on a weekly or bi-weekly basis, depending on how much you're eating, uh, full share or half share, depending on how big your family is. And, um, and then they have extra boxes uh, like uh, root crops and great stuff in November and December. So I have a CSA share from uh, May 1 through December 31, basically. So let me talk just to, briefly about produce and uh, then we'll take some more questions. Um, uh, if you go to organic.org uh, and go down the news from the gumshoe feed, you'll see we did an article about um, uh, these coatings that was very controversial because there was something called appeal that um, was made out of a bunch of toxins. Some NGO, a nonprofit, found the material safety data sheet and it was scary. The problem was that <clears throat> That was for a disinfectant. That wasn't for a food item, let alone a food item approved for use on organics. But we did look into it and there was a company similarly phrased that made a product that was a fungicide coating for post-harvest application that was approved for organics. And uh, what it really pointed out, and you have to excuse me because I need a drink. Only out of glass and well water. Um, what we found out was um, the Organic Materials Review Institute, of course, we've known a lot about them for a long time. They're funded by agribusinesses uh, and they're approving name brand products for use in organics. And this is the rub with no oversight from the USDA. They're doing whatever they think is right. And we know money talks and they're very friendly with the lobbyists at the Organic Trade Association and the corporations that fund them by paying fees to get their blessing on their product. So uh, there probably isn't anything wrong with coating an apple with beeswax, which is approved for use in organics. Some of these more exotic things, I don't trust the system right now. So, you might want to ask your produce provider what is on your products if you're buying them. If you, this is the deal, if you buy them local, I'm not finding anybody uses anything but beeswax if they're larger or a natural shellac or um, nothing, nothing. They're not coated because they don't harvest them in Washington in, in the fall and try to sell them to you in the next July and then they have to be in a controlled environment and they have to be coated. So local food is a great way to stay away from coatings on your um, zucchini and uh, coating on your apples and pears and other produce. Okay, back to you, Krista. That's my little rave out on coatings and OMRI, which we are trying to pressure the USDA to regulate uh, instead of letting them have free reign. Krista. Let's see here. Um, we have a couple of questions too to go back about um, the vaccines, especially mRNA. Um, are they being expected inspected for being in foods and labeled as such, or will they be in the future? Sure. Okay. And by the way, you can, while I'm ranting, you can try to consolidate, you know, with a piece of paper, instead of reading off the screen, consolidate some of these questions, which you're doing a good job. On. Um, so again, I'm going to ask you to go back to organiceye.org or the Facebook page and watch the beginning of this, because I, I, I don't want to repeat the whole 
deal on um, vaccines. But right now, there are very few on the market, only for hogs. Uh, and no, I don't know that anyone is testing. This is what we need to demand, testing for residues and what health implications they could have. Because we know that the COVID vaccine antibodies, not the vaccine itself, are showing up in milk. And what does it mean when antibiotic bodies to, um, uh, to disease that affects uh, specific species, but not humans is being found in our food. So we need to find out A, whether those antibodies exist there and B, what health impacts they might have. We have any more questions before I go on to my last item? The only other question is if based off of like the mainstream grocery stores, taking Whole Foods, Trader Joe's, ones that do have organic labels, um, of those options, which ones would be the most likely to be genuinely clean and organic? Well, that's a really tough question and it's a really good question. You know, what, one of the reasons that small farmers like CSA farmers have been hurt over the years is we all dreamed that the availability of organics would go up. That's a good thing. But now that you can buy your uh, quote organic food and diapers uh, at the same time at Target in one trip, you might be less uh, interested in driving across town to uh, a co-op grocer or the farmer's market or to pick up your CSA box, which quite frequently is close to home. Um, and uh, you're not getting the same quality of food. So those plastic boxes. So the, the two things that you're gonna find in mainstream grocers is um, organic food that was produced in livestock factories. So there are too many egg CAFOs, concentrated animal feeding operations that never let their chickens outside. And the USDA has permitted that for years. It's cheating. It's legalized cheating because they're not enforcing the rules. That's why buying your eggs close to home might be the best route or from a grocer that sells some better eggs. So um, same with milk. Um, the, there's a large company called Aurora that have a series of factory farms and uh, they supply the private label milk for Walmart. They call it great value or at Target or Costco. Don't buy their store bag milk. You're guaranteed to get factory farm milk where the cows are uh, live short stressed lives uh, with the bare, bare minimum of pasture if they're getting any real pasture. Um, and it's not just Aurora, there are other companies playing that same game. So uh, name brand milk uh, is a better choice. Organic Valley is my default when I'm traveling, but there are a lot of brands that are better than Organic Valley. They're local, they're fresher, they're more minimally pasteurized. I say better, not that Organic Valley is bad, but um, there's some really great local brands, but uh, a lot of places you can't find them. But uh, with those resources uh, that uh, if you go to the FAQ on organic.org, you can do your own homework and hopefully find those great dairy brands, egg brands. And uh, I would say when I travel, uh, I'm at Whole Foods uh, if I can't find a co-op and they do sell some better brands of eggs. They sell some, they, I know I can buy Organic Valley dairy products there. They, in many markets, sell local dairy brands that are certified organic. And you have to be very careful about their produce. Their conventional isn't any better than anyone else's conventional. Their industrial organic isn't any better, but they do have connections with more regional organic producers. And uh, so you might get better options there. Um, I'm going to do one more uh, issue, and I don't even remember what it is, so I have to look at my notes. Um, and then I want to uh, close, but uh, after my brief closing, I'll stick around for a few more questions. Um, and if you can't stay around, you can tune into the end of the videos and hear what was on everyone else's mind. So I call this organic payola. We've had the federal government pump a lot of money into the economy in the last few years. We've had some 
uh, bad hiccups in supply chains, people out of work, but they pumped about $100 million into organics. That's not a bad thing to build organics. It's mostly going into training farmers, training the trainers. It's uh, 15 million went to a loan to CCOF, the largest certifier in the country in California. They already have a budget of $22 million a year. And back to choosing your food. I don't want organic food that comes out of a CAFO. And I don't want organic food that comes out of a hydroponic warehouse sized greenhouse where the food isn't grown in nutrient rich, rich organic soil. It's grown in a fertilize, liquid fertilizer solution under artificial lights. CCOF in California helped pioneer that. And so you need to be careful what you're buying and who's behind it. So they got all this money now to help train and recruit more organic farmers. The problem is real family scale organic farmers are having a problem making ends meet right now because they can't compete with the factory farms. They can't compete with the imports and they can't compete with fraud. And now we're going to recruit more farmers and put more product in the pipeline. They have to, they should be using some of that hundred million dollars to do better enforcement, to tighten up the market, create the shortages that the family farmers, the new people we recruit will come in and fill the gap. So they call this transition to organic partnership program, TOPP. They love acronyms in Washington, DC. And so that's my last little rave out. I care about these things. I have access to great organic food. I want you to have organic food also. If you're not already uh, a member of Organic Eye, here's like the little fundraising pitch. We don't have any minimum donation. Obviously your dollars help fuel this mission for myself, our other resources, uh, researchers and staff. Um, but most importantly, you give us the moral authority to speak out. And so either join on Organic Eye or um, sign up for our free news feed, stay connected. We have the people power that way and share our social media contacts and our website with your friends and family. They trust you. And if you want them to become part of our movement, um, you can be that agent. So I'm gonna thank everybody for participating. I'll take a few more questions um, before I collapse. And uh, so Christy, your turn to talk for a few minutes. Yep, really just one more question that um, I think you could get to pretty quickly is how are you differentiating between genetic vaccines and mRNA vaccines? Okay, well, mRNA is just a new uh, tool technique for uh, uh, modifying the genome of a living organism of some kind, whether it's plant or animal. It's uh, evidently very effective and efficient and uh, quicker to develop, but there are genetically engineered vaccines, just like genetically engineered seeds and other life forms. We're, we're monitoring genetically engineered yeasts that are being used to process our foods, all these, quote, plant-based foods. Many of them are uh, manipulated with genetic engineering. And so um, I'm differentiating the older uh, GMO gene splicing and recombinant uh, genetic engineering techniques with um, the uh, newer technique, which has not been introduced yet to vaccines commercial introduction. Other than uh, my caveat, other than a very limited amount in, in hog production. So if you don't eat pork, if you eat pork, pay attention to that. You maybe want to discuss that with whoever you're buying your pork from. Krista, anything else? That is it for the question. Okay. A lot of okay. great discussion, though. I thank everyone here for participating and communicating with one another in the chat. I definitely think that that helps to fuel this community even further. Thank you, Krista, for your excellent work. As usual, I want to thank everybody for participating. You add meaning to my life, the connections we have through email, through the phone, through our website, through Facebook comments. We read them all, somebody responds, uh, and we learn through you. We learn what you're interested in. And uh, 
the last plug is become one of our intelligence agents. Uh, you'll see there's a link on our website that if you end up having any first ideas in the organic business, we're not privatized, we're publicized. We, uh, we all own the organic label together and it's our job at Organic Eye to make sure the rules and regulations are enforced. So if you hear or see anything, please uh, get a hold of us through our 800 tip line or uh, through our website and your identity will be held in strict confidence. Thank you, Krista. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye.